Well, he, um, he uses uh, biblical language really throughout the 1850s. Um, his, his mature career starts in 1854, which is when the Missouri Compromise is repealed by the Nebraska Bill. And this is Stephen Douglas's idea uh, for how to settle the territories of Kansas and Nebraska. This was like the last chunk of the Louisiana Purchase that was not yet organized in, into territories. It's the modern state of Kansas, and then Nebraska was everything from Nebraska up to Canada. So basically the Missouri River to the Rockies. And it was beginning to be settled. So how do we organize this into territories? And Douglas proposed, even though the, um, the Missouri Compromise of 1820 had drawn a line across the Louisiana Territory and said, north of this line, there will be no slavery. But so Douglas comes along now in 1854 and says, well, um, let's, let's have two territories here, and the residents can decide whether they want slavery or not. And he says, this is, uh, this is an ancient, well, this is an American principle. It's self-government. You know, you let the people decide. And this is how America has always been run. This is how the colonies were run before independence. Um, I'm just fulfilling this, this principle. And uh, Lincoln and much of the North is outraged by this because there had always been um, compromises between slave states and free states, trade-offs. But this seemed to be taking back something that had been reserved uh, for freedom and saying, well, maybe it could, could be a slave state. So this is, it's 1854. Lincoln says he's aroused by this as he's never been before. He gets back into politics. He'd been in the Illinois legislature for eight years, served one term in Congress, did not run for re-election. And he's kind of uh, at loose ends. He's a lawyer, successful lawyer. But this brings him uh, charging back into politics. And beginning here, he's, he's starting to use biblical imagery. His, his um, great speech that kicks off the rest of his life is in Peoria in October 1854. It's called the Peoria speech. It's a three hour long speech longest he ever gave. And there he lays down the themes really for the next six years of his life and even through the Civil War. And he, he basically says, uh, our principles are enshrined in the Declaration of Independence, in the Northwest Ordinance, which forbade slavery in the Old Northwest, and in the Constitution, which although it guarantees slavery in certain ways, allows the slave trade to be ended in 1808, which it was and never mentioned slavery. Slavery is never mentioned in the Constitution. It's always persons, persons held to labor. And, and Lincoln knew from reading Madison's notes of the Constitutional Convention that that was deliberate. And Madison said in the deliberations, you know, it would be wrong to admit property in men in wording. I mean, even though they were going to protect it in, in, in the provisions of it, but they didn't want to say what they were doing. And Lincoln thought that was important. So um, this is what he says in the speech, but he uses biblical imagery. He says, uh, our, our Republican robe is soiled and trailed in the dust. Let us turn and wash it white in the spirit of the revolution. And that's, you know, the, the saved in the book of Revelation have white robes. You know, they're described as having white robes. And then in, in the book of Daniel, uh, the, the ancient of days who is God wears a white robe. So Lincoln is using this biblical uh, imagery. And whether that's an indication of faith or an indication of the literary power of the King James Bible, it's certainly the second. Is it the first? Not sure. I, I think what, what then begins to um, happen to him as the Civil War begins and then lasts and lasts and lasts is he, he, he is confronted with a horrible situation, which is, here is this unprecedented level of carnage and slaughter. One. Two, God controls 
the world. God rules the world. Three, therefore, God wills this. God controls everything, therefore he must be willing this. Why? You know, and Lincoln, you know, he, he beats his mind against this problem for, for years. Um, Herndon, his, his law partner, said that, that he was always a determinist. And Lincoln had a little phrase. He said, the motive was born before the man. In other words, any action you take, the motive for that action was born before you were born. Everything is a chain of causes and effects. You know, you just follow it back. Everything is determined. And this was, you know, this was an aspect of the logic of Lincoln's mind. Uh, you know, philosophers have tussled with this for millennia and their alternative ways of looking at things, but, but this was the way Lincoln thought, Lincoln saw it. And so now as he becomes more um, religious, more of a theist, uh, but here, here is this problem. These battles, these horrible um, battles are happening. God could stop them. You know, he writes a memo to himself in, uh, uh, I think it's 1862, a private memo. Uh, and he said, um, you know, God could prevent this, could have prevented this war. He could stop it at any moment by his quiet power on the minds of the contestants. Yet he does not. Therefore, he wills that it continue. So he just, you know, he wrestles with this problem. And I, I track some of the ways we can follow it, because from time to time he will, he will have a discussion with someone or he'll write a letter about it. I mean, not often, because he keeps these things buttoned up to himself. But you can see here and there little signs of it.